Well, I think once we're transformed, then uh, God sends us into the community in different areas, the different aspects of where we're called to go. Um, I think God has to deal with the individual first. Um, but the blessing is once he deals with the individual, then we can go into the community and see change manifest. I believe the kingdom dimension is what God intends to come forth and be able to flow with his people. And then the different areas that we may be called to, to go minister in, to affect change, the different uh, areas of society that, you know, it may be business that we're called to. Um, it may be the government that we're called to. It may be uh, the music or entertainment field. And so once we're transformed, we share that light and that kingdom dimension comes forth in us. So it's understanding that Jesus came to save the lost. And so when he saves and transforms us, it's not only saving us, but it's also imparting in us everything that we need to be able to accomplish and to bring change. In that transformation, it goes into the community. The beautiful thing is God just doesn't deal with the church. He deals with outside influence. Jesus always went to where people were and brought transformation and brought change and brought life, which made the religious leaders in that biblical time frustrated. But like he said, I'm gonna go where God has sent me. Kingdom is different than religion. And so it shifts it in that it moves it into a consciousness of not, not the religious process, but the kingdom Jesus process. And so what, what Jesus does in that kingdom flow is move us out of that old religious establishment. And so in many instances, religion has a specific dynamic of how it functions. And there's a certain way and a conformity to the process. Jesus came to break down that religious process and bring us into a consciousness of understanding kingdom. And so when he brings kingdom manifestation, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, there's a mindset that's different than the religious systematic flow. And so the shifting happens when they see Jesus for who he is. And when he comes in in that DNA context, it's not I, that I look holy, it's that I am holy. So the shifting is that I'm not trying to talk a certain way or look a certain way or dress a certain way. There has been a change on the inside that has grabbed a hold of my heart and my very being and I become something new. It can happen. God can, can come in and bring transformation to anybody's life. What he does is set up opportunities for that change to manifest. And so the, the beautiful thing about the Lord is he knows each person's appointed time for their transformation. And so kind of like I mentioned in the message, there comes a point that Jesus becomes more important than anything else. That may be the death of a loved one, a loss of a job, a life circumstance suddenly changes. Then it doesn't matter whether I'm religious or whether I show up to church every Sunday. It's where am I in this wonderful relationship that I have with Jesus? And Lord, let me surrender to you and let you have your way in my life. Um, I guess the, the old and familiar will always manifest. The enemy, um, all Satan does is try to take us back from where we have been delivered from or what God has already brought us through. And so in that context of surrender, in that context of realizing what my triggers are, triggers are those things that try to lead you back to the, the, what you've been delivered from or what you come out of. They can even be people. And so you gotta make a stance to not go back and not deal with certain people or have certain dialogue that leads you astray from God's purpose and God's will. So I take the time in that incubation period to continue to commit and submit myself to God's will and purpose, uh, reading the word of God, studying it, uh, writing notes, reflecting, because I'm in a changed process. So once he grabs a hold of you, here comes incubation. Incubation meaning that I have to be changed before I come out of here. The hardest thing is in the changing process to let God have his way. And so in that context, I'm not looking back anymore. I've got to move forward. And in that context, deliverance may happen. Uh, God may free me from certain things. My mindset changes, but I don't open myself up to those triggers 
that may take me back. So Jesus said in John the 15th chapter, abide in me and I in you. I want to live, I want you to live in me and I want to live in you. So there's a context of, of me accepting Jesus means whatever, whenever he comes into my life, transforms my life, he intertwines his DNA with me. So that kingdom DNA means that everything that I need you to be is now manifested in you. And so in that process of Jesus living with you, he starts cleaning out. So now his, it's his habitation, it's his temple. So uh, what he wants is a temple to dwell in, not made with hands. He wants his people and he wants to live in and through us. So in that process of him coming in, he starts transforming us and guiding us and forming us into what he wants us to be. And so we start looking, acting, being more like him. As Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. That, that, Im that, that image, that mindset, that likeness, then the DNA starts coming forth. I start walking, talking, looking like Jesus. It starts manifesting, I become new. Religion is about membership. A kingdom DNA is about lifestyle and transformation. And so it's, it's a true understanding of who Jesus is. And so it's not uh, an outward manifestation, it's an inward manifestation that something has transformed and changed within me. And so I'm walking a new path that is free from the burdens and sin and hurt and pain of the past. I've become new, so I wanna live a new life. I think the outward manifestation does happen, that you can see kingdom. Um, what it is, um, it, it's, a, it's a new way of thinking and functioning, um, and that you really see what God's will and purpose is. Um, it's not adhering to church uh, protocols and all of that. Religious people know how to follow a protocol and a system and a process, and I'm used to church being a certain way and starting at a certain time and finishing a certain time. Uh, there was a religious gentleman that I used to pastor that um, understood and knew the religious system, a good guy, but he was just extremely religious. Um, he got changed eventually in his life and came back to me years after when I wasn't pastoring him anymore and said, I've truly gotten saved now. I understand what you were trying to do. Thank you for praying for people. Man, <laughs> thank you for praying for people and taking time with people. I, I told you to hurry and finish service because we want to go home. He was religious. He wanted the service to start at a certain time. He wanted service to finish at a certain time. Because he was religious minded and not kingdom minded, he had no understanding of praying for people or taking time for people at the altar or, or people being healed or, or freed from burden or pain. It didn't matter. Cause religiousness, the religious mindset brought a selfish attribute that I'm only concerned about me and I just want church to end. I'm so thankful that that man wrote me that letter and said that he was truly saved and he understood exactly what was going on. It, that actually is in pastoring meant more to me than anything else that ever happened. To know that that gentleman actually truly got saved means everything to me. He became kingdom. One of the things that I preached about is not getting comfortable or complacent. And so it's not getting, I guess, uh, accustomed to where you are, but continuing to grow. So I always challenge myself um, as I study, as I learn, as I read things that pull me out of my comfort zone, as I hear from God and he may give me clarity and I may get confirmation to do something that's out of my normal realm. Um, that's the beauty of continuing to grow in Christ. So growth means I can't stay the same. I'm continuously moving to another level. I shouldn't be at the same growth level that I was five years ago or two years ago, or maybe even six months ago. There's a level of growth and maturity that happens. Um, when I think of the maturity of, of even the prophetic gift that God has blessed me with, uh, well, that's one thing I preached about. I didn't know how in the world to use that gift or what to do with it when it first hit me. And I would blurt things out that, that I know God is saying that I didn't want to say, but I had no consciousness on how to flow with it. And so 
as you mature, as you grow, as you uh, stay in Christ and nurture your gift, you get an understanding and a clarity of how to use it, when to use it, what to say. You're constantly in a, in a level of growth. At the end of uh, 2020, which was an unbelievable year, um, God, right before Thanksgiving uh, to the end of the year, I had to go through a healing process. And so um, in my body, I had to, you know, get to a place that I was surrendered to what God wanted. And um, um, it changed me, uh, the time spent with him. Uh, one thing God required of me is to, to study his word and to spend time with him in the morning and in the evening. And I found myself even in the middle of the day, just taking time. You know, when you're at a place that you need healing and you need God to heal your body and heal your temple, um, you just submit totally to him. Um, nothing else matters. It's like uh, on our bodies, if, if we suddenly have an earache, that earache takes over everything else. Nothing else matters except the fact that I have this earache or this toothache or this hangnail that just, that just stands out. And it's like, okay, Lord, uh, I, I need, and there's something that, we may be able to fix. We may be able to take an aspirin or a Tylenol or uh, take a whatever, uh, a hangnail and take a fingernail file and, 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 and get rid of it. But certain things God says, I want your attention. So he wanted me to go deeper in him, deeper in understanding uh, of the revelation of his word. Um, there was a, a mindset that I needed to know and have a deeper clarity of him speaking to me and take more time to stop and listen and not be on the go and run off. And so in that process of healing and not being able to run out of the house, God uh, was able to speak to me and I was able to listen and hear clearly what he was saying. When we're on the move, we sometimes, okay, God, yeah, I'm listening to this word or I'm listening to the song and praise God for it. And I'm singing along as I'm in the car heading to my next process. but. What God does is stop us sometimes and say, I want you to spend time with me. So what he was able to do in that stopping process was download to me the next level of where he wanted me to go. And um, uh, I'm not gonna go in detail about that next level, but I can say this, it's for the body and it's to bless the body. So it's preparing me to be a better and bigger blessing to the people and to the kingdom. And so he said, I need you to go deeper for you to be able to give out what I need you to give. So it stopped everything. It changed everything. Uh, everything had to just revert itself. Um, I love the Kansas City Chiefs and I can, you know, what God took me back to is the fact that um, it was a point in my life that he took me off of television. Um, uh, I, was, I was in my early 20s. I just gotten out of college. And I loved the Chiefs, and I loved at that time, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. And I would be in here losing my mind in church because I wanted to go watch the game. And I, and, and I didn't want to tape it. I wanted to see the game. And I was in here frustrated. And I wanted, I, and, and so the Lord checked me and he said, is that game more important than me? And I said, well, Lord, no, but you know, but my heart was still there. And he said, I don't need your heart to be there. Off of television for over a year, probably about a year and a half, I could not watch any television at all. He checked me and stopped me and said, you're gonna grow. There was much more reading that I did, man. There was a much deeper, deeper level that God had to prepare me for in ministry. See, I had ministry in my head, but it needed to manifest in my heart. And so all that I've learned is irrelevant if I can't have the, the heart nature to surrender and bring it forth. And so I needed to go through a time of, of commitment to him that took me to a deeper level. Um, this was in a, in a similar manifestation of an understanding that son, it's time to go to a deeper level. Um, there's some things that I need you to do for my kingdom and I need you to commit to me and go to another level. So he made me commit time. I, ha I have to spend a certain amount of time uh, investing myself into his presence and stopping and listening. 
reading his word and going where he needs me to go. And that's the change that happened. I wanted to blame everything else. And God said, there's nobody else to look at, it's me and you. And so this is what I need you to do. And this is where I need you to go. And so I'm grateful for that. And you know, thinking about that, take being off of TV for that period of time, I'll never ever forget it in my life. And I'll never ever forget when suddenly, um, uh, he just said, you, you can watch it again. <laughs> It was unbelievable. It was just a strange occurrence. Um, but uh, uh, the growth, the time reading, um, and I'm not an easy, I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a big reader. I read because I need to, not because I specifically want to. And it, with me, with books, I'll read chapters. I'll look, i literally look at the heading of each chapter and go there. And I don't want the fluff. I just want to get to the, the, the meat of what I need. And let me get what I need out and take notes. And now I'm done. I got it. So um, it was good for me. What that did when you when you don't have the outside thing of chasing after all the other stuff and I got to OK, I'm going to read this for a little bit and go watch the game. Couldn't do that. So I could relax and take time and hear from him. And um, I'm grateful for what he did in my life during that time. And I'm grateful for what he showed me at the end of 2020 and the new manifestation of where I had to go.